Lincoln's Last Days. This is a book written by Bill O'Reilly, and it really is just talking about all that surrounded Lincoln's last days after the Civil War and leading up to his last days after the Civil War. This is his note to you. You are about to read a true story that took place more than 140 years ago, the story of one of America's saddest events. Just days after the end of the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. President Lincoln had led this country through the bloodiest war in its history. He had reason to hope that the nation would be united again. Abraham Lincoln was betrayed by his countrymen. He died within months of his 56th birthday and before he could complete his life's work. The tragedy that befell Lincoln should be known by every American. His life and death continue to shape us as a people, even today. America is a great country, but like every other nation on earth, it is influenced by evil. John Wilkes Booth epitomized the evil that can harm us, even as Abraham Lincoln represents the good that can make us stronger. I think that Abraham Lincoln is one of our strongest, bravest, and most exemplary leaders. As you read about his last days, I hope you will come to understand what made him great. Before I began researching this book, I thought I understood the story of President Lincoln's assassination. But even though I used to teach history in a high school, there were aspects of the event that were new to me and that will be new to you. This is a story of courage, cowardice, and betrayal. President Lincoln's great courage was met with the bitter anger and hatred of people who could not accept that the Union Army had won the war. As you read about this time in our country's history, think about what we can learn from this event. I love American history. I collect letters signed by presidents and photographs and drawings depicting presidents and important events. One of my favorite is a signed photograph of Abraham Lincoln. Looking at the photograph of President Lincoln, I wonder what he was thinking. In this book, I have used his words and many other primary sources to bring his last days to life. Here's the story of the best kind of American. I am proud to share this with you. This is Bill O'Reilly, New York, May 2012. We start in chapter 31 because there's a lot to this story, and I would love for you to take time to read it, but it's a very long book. So we're going to jump ahead, chapter 31, Friday, April 14th, 1865. This is Washington, D.C., 10 o'clock p.m. The third act is underway. Soon the play will be over, and the Lincolns will return to the White House. It is seven minutes past ten, after exchanging some small talk with the ticket taker, John Buckingham, who lets the actor in courtesy of the house. Booth walks off. Buckingham's co-worker, Joseph Sesford, points out that Booth has been in and out of the theater all day. Wonder what he's up to, Sesford mutters to Buckingham. They watch as Booth climbs the staircase to the dress circle, which leads to the hallway to the state box. But neither man thinks Booth's unusual behavior deserves closer scrutiny. They watch him disappear up the stairs and then return to their attention to the front door and to the patrons returning late from intermission. At the top of the stairs, Booth enters the dress circle lobby. He is now inside the darkened theater, standing directly behind the seats of the second-level audience. Booth approaches the door, leading into the state box hallway. This is just a picture of where you'll find Lincoln. If you look up at the top of the screen right here, this is where Lincoln was sitting during the play and during his assassination. This is the stairs, uh, the, the area of the stage onto which John Wilkes Booth leapt from here down here. Also in the, the rush of jumping down, he entangles his leg on one of the tapestries hanging here and ends up snapping his leg when he lands on the stage. He sees Charles Forbes sitting in John Parker's chair. Instead of staying in the tavern with Parker, the slightly drunk Forbes decided to go into the theater and sit in Parker's chair. Sensing that Forbes is not a regular guard, Booth manages to smooth talk the unsuspecting Forbes and gives him a piece of paper with some writing on it. Even though Forbes was questioned later by police, about the meeting and the paper. The paper was never found, and its message never revealed. Flattered by the attention of the famous actor, Forbes let Booth step through the doorway without questioning him. Booth now jams the wooden music stand he had seen earlier into the side of the door so that it wedges the door shut from the inside. He creeps down the hallway. 
to get a better view of the present, he looks through the peephole in the wall at the back of the box. Authorities will later claim that Booth had carved the hole earlier in the day, but there's no real proof of that. Booth sees that Clara Harris and Major Rathbone, Rathbone are sitting along the wall to his far right, at an angle to the stage, and Lincolns are almost along, are along the rail. He can hear the players down below. He knows that in a few short lines, Harry Hawk's character, Asa Trenchard, will be alone delivering his sockdologizing old man trap line. Booth's cue is just ten seconds away. He presses his black hat down onto his head, then removes the derringer from his coat pocket and grasps it in his right fist. With his left hand, he slides the long, razor-sharp knife from its sheath. Booth takes a deep breath and softly pushes the door open with his knife hand. The box is dimly lit from the footlights down below. He presses his body against the wall, carefully to stay in the shadows while awaiting his cue. Abraham Lincoln's head is visible over the top of his rocking chair, just four short feet in front of Booth. Then Lincoln looks down and to the left at the audience. You sockdologizing old man trap, booms out through the theater. The audi audience explodes in laughter. It's at this point that John Wilkes Booth fires a shot and kills President Abraham Lincoln. He then jumps off the stage. I would love for you to take some more time to research. This whole book is amazing, and you can tell by the writing that it's entertaining. And this is just one small part of our history in America, but it's a major part of our history. So please take time to watch this video, make notes of what happened, and if you have any questions, then feel free to bring them to me in class tomorrow. Thanks, and I'll see you another day.